Hi there everyone, this is Dr. Gwen from the Dr. Gwen International Training and Empowerment Academy and host of the iTunes show, the Dr. Gwen Podcast Show. Good afternoon again to you. Today we are actually talking about a really good topic and something that could be considered a little bit gory too. We're talking about really following your passions. And what does that have to do with a heart attack? Now, I know yesterday we talked about the law of increase. And we looked at several factors that contributed to that law of increase. But today, now we're talking about your passions, your heart attack rate, and everything that contributes to that. Now, A very troubling bit of statistic that I want to share with you is that did you know that on Monday mornings there is a higher increase of heart attacks for people in general? Yes, 20% more for men and 15% more for women. The heart attack rate increases that much. Now, people may think that's contributing to stress, and it may be. Some people think that because people are drinking on the weekends, and then Monday morning comes. But truthfully, the more I talk to people, the more I realize that it could be the stressors from the job they have. I had a very endearing conversation yesterday with a a dear woman who also walked away from her corporate job. Now, I want to make it clear, ladies, we're not talking about you walking away indiscriminately from your position. But I want you to hear me out because I do have some nuggets that I want to share with you that will definitely influence at least the quality of your life that you're living right now. And you've heard me talk about passions before and the relation of passions to your happiness and to your whole general well-being and to your outlook on life. However, this dear lady that I was talking to told me about how she had a corporate executive job and she hadn't had the opportunity to see her son, very often her kids. And she walked away and she said something to me that was so intriguing and so powerful. She said she was just a few weeks away, a few days away from cashing in her company stock. And she resigned and walked away 20 days earlier. And she was asking, or her coworkers asked her, Well, couldn't you wait for 20 more days? And her response was, I cannot wait for 20 more minutes. 20 minutes. Can you imagine? I understand that feeling when you feel trapped in a place where you are not fully expressed and that the work that you're doing is not making the big impact that you desire it to be. You see, as you know, we all have a reason for being here and underlying to who we are, whether we're secretaries, custodians, executives, leaders, the president, whomever, no matter who we are, there is an undergirding factor, that undergirding auxiliary that runs throughout our veins. And we want to make a difference and we want to make a contribution. Inherently, that's who we are. And when you are not in flow with that feeling, then what results is that feeling of desperation, that feeling of being trapped. But what do you do with that? Right now, with the job that you are doing, and I'm talking to the ladies who are in jobs, and yes, you ladies too, who've started businesses. 
because some of you went out to start businesses just because you felt like it was a trend or something to jump on without even giving any consideration about whether or not you like the work. It's very important that you are connected with whatever you are doing. So you shouldn't feel strained or forced to jump onto the next bandwagon that someone brings in front of you just because they tell you it can make you money. But I want to dispel a lot of myths here about this whole passion thing and this whole income thing. Because people think that to follow your passions mean that you have to go out and start a business. That's not true. You can find ways to engage in your passion while you are doing something else. But you have to make certain that whatever else you're doing is something that you love. And what if you don't love it? You may say, well, Gwen, what do I do if I'm in a position right now that I hate? Well, the first thing I would recommend for you to do is to not make a hasty move necessarily unless you feel your health is at stake. Because you have to understand also, as I said, you're not alone in this universe and there is a divine team that is set up to benefit you, to work in your behalf, to work with you, to fulfill what you want to feel fulfill in your life. So you have to be mindful of the presence of your div divine team. However, though, if your health is not at stake, if you're not running to the hospital every week or every other week due to this stress, and you feel like you can endure it a little bit longer, then lay a plan. Find out what it is that you love to do. And you can ask yourself a number of questions to get there. For example, what do I enjoy doing when I am not at work? What do I think of doing all the time that if I were to have all the funds that I possibly could have, then I would just go off and do that one thing? What is it that I, I have as a hobby that I like to do that other people tell me that I'm good at? As I said that, a memory pops in mind. I just interviewed on a podcast show a young lady who has a soap making business and she was going to school to be a, an artist like a photographer an artist and in the midst of that she discovered that she didn't have to go to school for that she followed her passions and her heart which is photography and thought she would want to do another piece of photography. However, it didn't work out. And she was happily making soap at home. And visitors would come by and say, you know, you're really good at this. You know, why are you so selfish? Why are you keeping this to yourself, she says. And what happened was she eventually started a soap making business which even she just reported that this holiday, she is supposedly on vacation and it is incredibly busy. I am so elated to hear stories like this because we have set up in our mind what we think a business should look like. She's still making soap inside of her home and I'm sure as that grows, she will expand that outside to other areas. I've also read about people who, whose hobby was making potato guns. <laughs> potato guns, for crying out loud. <laughs> and made thousands, if not millions of dollars showing people how to make potato guns. What do you love to do? It may not be soap making, it may not be potato guns, it may be baking, 
it may be doing something that you could teach someone how to do. And then you may be struggling and say, well, I wouldn't even know the first place to start. Well, if you don't, reach out to me. I could point you to a few resources that will help you to get started. Okay? But this is what you can continue and begin to continue to do while you have a job. Instead of dreading it every day and putting yourself in illness and getting heart attacks on a Monday morning. Just start writing. What do I like to do? What am I skilled at? What was I trained to do? What do I love to do? And put those together. I have a magic money matrix that I actually created. Once again, I am not going to put a link on this page. So if you really want it, you're going to have to private message me for it and I can send you the link to access the download. It's a free download. Working through that magic money matrix will help you to figure out something that you love using your skills and whatever else and training that you have. But that's something you can do. Ask yourself these questions and then come up with a bunch of solutions and test them against your heart. How do you feel when you actually consider yourself doing these things? You know, I love Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs. He says that your work fills a very big portion of your life and it's something that you ought to love doing. And if you're doing that work and you're not happy, then you shouldn't subject yourself to that. Finding whatever you love is heart work. It's a matter of the heart. So you've got to discover what you love. And if you haven't discovered it, then what you need to do is not stop until you find it. And he delivered that speech in 2005 to the Stanford University graduating class. I don't remember which one, whether it was the spring or the fall class or the summer, but it was a graduation address. Now, if you really stop to think about it, the top 100 income earners in the United States of America are all following their passions. So it's not an accident. So aside from the financial benefit, there are health benefits. There are research studies to show that when you are doing what you love, you not only have longevity, but you also are happier. I can tell you right now from living my passion, being here, talking with you every day is a passion for me. Sharing, inspiring comments is a passion for me. And empowering women is a passion for me. Writing and developing coursework is a passion for me. I love those things. And I'm incredibly passionate about those things. And I can tell you that I feel so much happier doing those things every single day. Now, would you like to have that experience? Would you like to feel happy every day? If you are in a job that you don't like right now, start writing. Now, don't just write. What you have to do is to lay your plans to make it happen. And ladies, if you can't lay that plan, and once again, reach out. Reach out for support. You can message me and I'll be more than happy to point you to some resources that will help you to do that. But you want to make sure that you are living your life passionately and you are fulfilling on what you are here for. Otherwise, you won't feel fulfilled and happy. And I see a fly in here. And I don't even know how he got in here. Ouch. But anyway, so what I want to do next is I want to help you to figure out how you can lay up a plan B. You can lay up a plan B by working at nights on the things that you want to work on. So as you go to work during the day, do your work well. 
focus on your work. Don't think about the pain and the suffering that you're in, enduring, but just do your work well. And then come home, set aside a few hours to work on your plans, especially if you want to see that plan supporting you financially in the future. If, however, you're not interested in doing a business, and if you feel that you don't absolutely hate what you do, then set aside some time to do your passion so that you can actually work on something. It could be for play, for fun, for volunteering, whatever it is. Just find a way to do what you really love to do. So don't, don't lock yourself in a jam and in a bind where you're feeling like, I can't get out, I can't get out. That's not a good feeling. It's not a, a happy feeling. It is not a healthy feeling. So to leave you, I want you to consider this, that if you are actually working on a job right now that you hate, the one thing that you really, really want to do is to make sure that you are not stressing yourself about it. Be calm. If you're in a position where you feel like you want to step up to the next level, be calm about it. Do your best work and live into that position that you want. Always dress the part of that position that you want. Always speak like the person in that position that you want. And this way, your boss won't see you at work as being a good worker just for that job that you have. But your boss can see you in a position as, wow, she is someone that I need to promote to the next level because she's displaying all of these qualities, these qualities of leadership, these qualities of problem solving that is really necessary for this company to go to the next level, and then don't just do that. Also, put the word in your boss's ears about where you wanna go. And this way, he or she can start looking at you from that perspective of where you're headed. But if you're in a job right now and you feel like, my goodness, I can't handle it, put a little switch on in your brain as long as it's not affecting you health-wise. And even that, you can mentally switch. But everybody knows his or her limits for now. So you do that and then set your plan B in place and work on that. What you will do is you probably will be less likely to be of a statistic for that heart attack rate on Monday mornings. You will probably increase your lifespan and I can tell you, you will be happy. You will be completely so much more happy. You'll be fulfilled. And then you will be transmitting your gifts and your talents to the people around you, which will cause you to feel more fulfilled, more alive, and more of a contributing factor to the quality of other people's lives. So I thank you once again for joining me and this is Dr. Gwen empowering lives to live purposefully and passionately. Love you guys.